Populating the galaxy with human beings might seem like science fiction, but with countries and companies competing to get off this planet like there's a bad smell or something, mankind's first steps towards multi-planetary status may come sooner rather than later. But before we begin, should we take a moment to ask ourselves if what we're doing is right? Let's find out as we explore the ethics of colonizing the universe. Starting at number 4. Why? Before we consider the rights and wrongs of establishing human settlements throughout the solar system and beyond, we must first figure out why mankind may wish to do such a thing. Are we heading out into the universe to spread something positive? Or do we need to take a step back and ask ourselves if our intentions are good? Stephen Hawking believes we should colonize other worlds because humanity is running out of space here on Earth. He feels we must become a multi-planetary species if we are to survive, given our penchant for hoovering up resources and blowing the ever-loving bejesus out of each other. The continued existence of humanity seems like a reasonable motive. In fact, it may be the most persuasive, until you consider the likelihood that we'll probably wreck any other planet we visit as we've done on Earth. It's easy to picture mankind setting up a new world only to asset strip the place within a decade, murdering all those cute space beavers in the process for their delicious beaver milk. It's also problematic if we do the same thing to a planet devoid of life, because who's to say where humanity's lust for shiny things will end? To prevent this happening, Perhaps mankind must make itself sustainable on one planet before moving to another. Otherwise, we may end up hopping from world to world like some kind of devastating virus. At 3. What's there? Let's say technology progresses to the point where we get to choose from a number of different worlds. Do we go for a barren, rocky world and terraform the heck out of it? Or do we establish ourselves on a planet that's already teeming with life, advanced or otherwise? The hostile invasion of a world populated by intelligent life seems immoral when you consider how many planets there are to pick from. If we're sticking to a code of ethics, we'd be wise not to repeat the brutal mistakes made during European colonization. But what if our chosen planet only contains simple life, like cells and microbes? Is it ethical to inject ourselves into this biosphere, or should we think of it as a giant reserve and let nature run its course without our influence? Interfering in such a world is considered unethical by British physicist and geologist Martin J. Fogg. In his paper, The Ethical Dimensions of Space Settlement, he argues that space settlement of an inhabited world would be immoral, even if it was to the benefit of its terrestrial life. However, Fogg goes on to describe how a strict preservationist mindset would be unsustainable, given that humanity loves to spread its culture and ideas more than my fat grandma likes to spread butter on ice cream. That, that last one wasn't a direct quote. But it should have been. If we're going to expand, then some contamination of existing biospheres is an inevitable consequence, albeit one we must attempt to limit in scope wherever possible. But can we do this by restricting our efforts to a few select planets? How far should we humans allow ourselves to expand? Number 2. How far? Let's imagine that the human race eventually develops the ability to inhabit multiple star systems. We can colonize planets outside the solar system throughout our Milky Way galaxy. This might be done with faster-than-light nanobots traveling with light sail technology, or maybe humans will do it, if we find a space portal hiding in the butt crack of Mars. If that situation does come to pass, how far should humanity go? Where are the boundaries of mankind's expansive desires? We've sought to inhabit almost every corner of Earth. So might we be equally greedy when it comes to outer space? 
Is it ethical to assume that just because we've turned up somewhere and shouted first, we're entitled to own that part of the galaxy? Or should we develop a new set of rules governing intergalactic colonization to ensure that other life forms out there get a shot at establishing themselves too? Once more, the answer to this question depends on your purpose for expanding. If you believe it is our manifest destiny to control as much of the universe as possible, you'll see no problem in hoovering up worlds far and wide. And the same applies if you think mankind is under threat, since the best way of preserving our species is to inhabit as many different places as possible. And at number one, who goes? Australia. They've given the world the Wolverine, the Joker, Thor, the Hulk, the Crocodile Hunter. And it managed to do all this despite being used as a place to dump Britain's criminals in the 19th century. Now, you'd hope we'd take colonization a little more seriously when it comes to traversing the galaxy. As cool as a planet full of prisoners and superheroes sounds, it probably won't be the best example of what mankind has to offer. But who will get to go? From which nation will Earth choose its colonists? Should we pick people from all demographics to nip that equality problem in the bud? Or must we be brutal and pick only the strongest, fittest, and most intelligent regardless of race or nationality? Well, according to New Statesman columnist India Bork, we should go for the former. But we'll probably do the latter. She has described Stephen Hawking's desire for expansion as elitist, even going so far as to compare the physicist to Donald Trump. Ms. Bork believes that since space will be reserved for the wealthy, this puts it out of reach of most ordinary people. She also takes issue with Elon Musk's requirement for physically strong individuals to be prioritized, with their ability to dig up ice water to drink seemingly less important than being the right nationality. Or is that too harsh? Must we send a true representation of all Earthlings as a priority above everything else? Should we strive to ensure that as many different people, ideas, and cultures make it to our new world as possible? If colonization essentially spreads our current inequalities to other worlds, it may be even harder to solve than it is here on Earth. Humanity must take into account the practical needs of a colony but we must also ensure that when we do spread, we don't repeat the same societal mistakes we've made back home. So, if we're escaping a planet known for murder, destruction, and college panty raids, how will this shape and influence the first colonists of Earth? Well, we're going to discuss this in our bonus video, The Second Earth, which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this, and indeed all of our bonus content which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then it's cool, we still love you, and we'll continue to provide the best content we can under YouTube's restrictions. As you'll find out, by watching our recent video, which asks whether humans have already beaten extinction.